All right, all right. We're going to start off in prayer real quick. We're going to break some things open today. How about that? Okay. All right, thank you. Hey, I want to let y'all know, this is a a judge-free zone. If your electricity ever goes out, just put your cap on. You're good. Just just come on in, put your T-shirt on, a hoodie. Hoodies are great. You're going to be fine. We're we're not going to uh, uh, judge you. If you walk in with a cap and a hoodie on, you're you're good. Um, I know a lot of people's electricity went out this morning. Let's pray, and then we're going to accomplish some things today. Father God, I thank you, I love you, I honor you, and I know today is going to be a day that is going to change people's lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so let me tell you how this week started. Last week was pretty powerful at, at the Revival Weekend. I walked in Monday morning. When I walked in Monday morning, the presence of God was stronger in this sanctuary than it was Saturday night or Sunday morning. I was like, wow. And the Lord spoke to me and said, this is about to be a break open week. Immediately, there was one thing that that, that we do. And over the last month, the best day I had was doubled on that very day. It was a break open time. It was a break open season. But I do know that whenever God releases something over your life, you get excited about it. But as soon as it's released over your life, you have a jump start. You mean teach them really good? You have a jump start on the enemy. You know why? Because he doesn't know what's coming. But then when you profess it out of your mouth, he tries to get a game plan, but he's a day or two behind. That's why if you always stay ahead of the enemy, he will always be behind you. He will always be under your feet if you keep going with the Lord. But if you slow up, he can catch up. So as the week went on, warfare started to, to kind of grow a little bit. But that's to be expected. But I'm okay because I got the jump on him, and I'm going to do what he's called me to do. Have you ever had a started a business and things weren't going good and the enemy caught up to you and then it was hand-to-hand combat? You know he's going to get defeated. You you know, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. So you're going to win everything. You just got to keep going and believe in the prophetic word over your life. That's where you, this is why you you fight in life for your health, your finances, your marriage, your kids, your family, your friends, your city, your nation, everything that you're connected to, fight for it in the spirit, okay? And then so I was in here praying and the Lord really started speaking to me and I heard the word that I never use is unfathomable. You know what that word means? It means incapable of being fully explored or understood, Now, you ready for this? The call of God on your life is unfathomable, which means if you spend every waking moment for the rest of your life trying to explore what God has for you, you'll never be able to reach it all. So that means that for the rest of your life, if you threw your life into the things that God has for you, it would be just not rewarding for the kingdom's sake, but for your sake, but be the wildest adventure that you've ever gone on. But the thing about it is, a lot of times we dabble in so many stuff that's not related to what God has called us to, and so we back up. I'm talking to people that wants to advance in the things God has for them. Another word about unfathomable is, is understood. When you really realize that your call, you can't even fathom it in the natural realm, it will blow your mind. Everything I've ever done has been hidden behind my insecurities. To move forward with God, you got to tackle insecurities. You ever heard somebody say, God called me a pilot, but I'm scared of heights? They're like, I had a guy say that one time. I'm like, dude, you like 30, 35,000 up in the air. He said, I know, but I had to overcome that. To do what God called me to do. And so in Job 9 and 10, it says, Who does great things, unfathomable things, and wondrous works without numbers? God does that. And who does he use to do those? You. Let's say that one day God, God, God stuck somebody in your heart that was a missionary, and they were struggling bad financially. What if God blessed you with the business that you could take care of them? Or what, have you ever been sitting there and, and, you, and you heard about a, a nonprofit in Texarkana and your heart was drawn to them? It was to give, to serve, or to pray, or all the above. You can do unfathomable things with your life. Romans eleven thirty three. 33, it says, oh, how deep 
are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How unfathomable are his decisions and unexplainable are his ways. Has something ever happened to you from God? And someone said, how did that happen? And you went, God, if you cheapen and try to explain what he did, you're trying to lower what he did. You just got to say, I can't explain it. Because the Bible says that's how his ways operate. They're unexplainable. You have to understand it. Do you know why so many people don't walk in the blessings of God? Because if they can't describe it and they can't understand it, they won't receive it. One of the greatest things God ever spoke to me, it says, you're never going to understand it and don't try to figure it out. Just walk in it. I said, yes, sir. I can't understand what God does in my life. I don't try to figure it out. Lord, no. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm just going to keep going. So in prayer that same day, I was praying, and the Lord gave me the word, unfathomable, something happened. I was sitting there, and the Lord said, I want to drop, y'all ready for this, ridiculous favor on people. Kingdom-minded people, ridiculous favor. Why? If a kingdom-minded person gets ridiculous favor, they don't keep it. They divide it. They don't hide it. They divide it. They give it to everybody else. Their joy, their peace, their gifts, their talents, their abilities. If you can sing but you don't sing in public or on video, nobody gets to be a part of what you're doing. If you're a teacher, that's why I like letting different people come up here and speak from Sunday to Sunday. They have different types of gifts. You know, whatever you're called to do. Have you ever seen somebody that made something at their house and they gave it to you? And you're like, dear Lord, this is better than anything you can buy in a store. You need to launch out a little bit. You need to present that to the public because you got a gift. And when you understand that, things will start to shift in your life. Ridiculous means absurd or laughable. So after I got that word, I was walking around here praying, and, and I had a vision. And in this vision, my wife and I started laughing. And then we started belly laughing. You know what that is? That's when you done, everybody's looking at you like, man, that joke was crazy over there laughing. We just started laughing and we were just laughing, and then, and then our kids were with us, and they started laughing in this vision. Then everybody around us started laughing. Why? Because ridiculous favor just hit you. You know, a, a lot of people that have favor on their life, they don't flaunt it. They bless people with it. I mean, there's people that have so, I got some, some older gentlemen that I call, they have ridiculous favor when it comes to wisdom. And when they just say, hello, it's anointed. And when they just talk to me, it's so anointed. And they have ridiculous favor when it comes to getting revelations from the Lord. I can mention a scripture and they'll say, oh, yeah, well, let me tell you what that means. Two hours later, they're done. Just giving that wisdom out to you. Walk in the favor. Now, we're not all favored in, in, in every area of our life. There are certain areas that you got favor on. Walk in that. Now, next word I really felt towards the end of the week is I was really praying and uh, I went on some fast this week. I don't, I don't tell people I fast the week before. I tell people after I fast because when I fast, God starts revealing things. And he said there's attacks and, and things happening, but I'm going to turn them around for my good. So let me tell you what happened this week. I got a message from a guy in Texarkana. He said, hey, man, I'm feeling generous. I want to bless you. I said, great. I want to receive. He said, what's your cash app? So I sent him my cash app. He said, so is this a picture of you? I said, yeah, that's my cash app. And then he messaged me back and said, hey, man, look, I'm trying to send 1500 but it won't go through. But it wasn't my profile pic. It was my name, but a different profile pic. Scammer. So I said, whew, this guy's trying to scam me. I better go take my money out of this account. So you know what I did? I went and put it in an account that I do all my stocks out of. Well, if you follow the stock market, it's down, and it's probably going to go down even more this week. I said, wait a minute. This guy tried to come and scam me, and I got frustrated. But, oh, no, if you come and try to attack me, I'm going to gain from your attack. Don't be mad when attacks come your way. You're going to prosper through them. And so what I did is one of my friends said, have you heard that stocks and cryptos are going to take a massive nosedive next week? I said, praise God, because now i got some extra money to stick towards it. And when I started praying, this is what I felt the Lord told me. He said, this attack on you was a small attack, and it wasn't going to work. But the money you put over is going to continue to pay you for years, for years 
because I'm going to put it in dividends. You know what that means? It's just going to keep working. And so when, when, when something happens to you, step back, don't react, and say, how is this going to benefit God's kingdom? Because anytime the devil attacks you in any way, God's going to promote you even more out of it. And you're going to figure a way out of it. Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. Listen, he didn't say he's going to defeat them in private. He's going to defeat them right in front of you. You're going to see them be defeated. Now, hardest question is, can we love our enemy once they're defeated? Someone comes against you, they're defeated. Are you willing to help them back up? Are you willing to pray over them? I'm not saying amen, but I'm feeling it. You know, it's one of those things. It says, and it says, they will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Why do they, why do they flee? Have you ever had a group of people that may come against you, and then when the enemy gets done, they scatter, they lost their strength, and it takes them a long time to regather? When that happens, you gain your strength back. When people come against you, Pray before you respond to them on things. That's going to help somebody this week. Because whenever somebody's prospering in life, the favor, ridiculous favors on them, attacks and scammers will always come at them. But when you use wisdom, you will steward what God has given you and you won't lose it. Somebody, own up. Man, they're having fun in kids' church. Somebody made a fake, this is so sad. Somebody made a fake YouTube channel just like my channel and, and this one guy messaged me and said, hey, Mr. Dawson, man, I love you, and I've been trying to help you in your orphanage as much as I can, but I can't give any more money right now to your orphanage. And I said, I don't have an orphanage. He said, you don't have an orphanage in the Philippines and Nicaragua? I said, no, I don't. I've been sewing into, into your orphanage for over a year. And I said, well, if you go click the link you give to, that person has zero videos and three followers Mine has a few more videos and a few more followers. You've been scammed. One lady said she sent me her house payment. She didn't send it to me. She sent it to a scammer. This is where discernment in this hour, things are going to come to you. The Bible even says the devil will come to you and look like an angel of light. Something will appear, and you'll be like, yes, Lord. And the Lord says, no, you, that's not me. That is an, the enemy coming in something that looks like an angel of light. Have you ever seen something that you're like, man, that's too good to be true? It's because it is. But you'll feel the anointing on something when God presents it to you. But not every good thing that comes before you is actually from the Lord. Okay, Psalms 34, 7. I just got ahead of myself. Okay, Psalms 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. That is a guaranteed promise. You hear me? That is a 100% guaranteed promise. When the enemy comes against you, you will overcome him if you simply do not stop, if you do not fail, if you do not back up. I'm guaranteeing you, you are going to be okay. Psalms 91, 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard around you in all of your ways. When you are walking with the Lord and the enemy comes against you, comes against your health, your family, your finances, the Lord will encamp people around you, angels around you, intercessors around you, and you will get through. Now, next word I heard in prayer was Holy Spirit excitement. I'm like, God, these words make no sense. You're talking about unfathomable, ridiculous favor, laughing, ridiculous favor, then attacks. And then you're talking about the Holy Spirit excitement. And the Lord started speaking to me. He said, what happens every time the enemy attacks? Victory happens, and you become better because of it. You're going to have a better week. So Monday, I was praying, and, I got, and, and the Lord spoke to me. And it's my last point, but I haven't got there yet. And, and the Lord said, it's going to be a break-open week. Well, Tuesday night when I was in prayer, the Lord said, tell people, Sunday, there was a break open week, but they're about to walk into a break open season. Now, I don't know what God means when he says season. In the natural, we're talking three months, 90 days. You better pray and fast and get ready because what happens if everything you prayed for manifested in the next 90 days? Have you been praying for something? Have you been praying for things for your family? Have you been praying for, for things to break open in your life? What happens if it happens? What are you going to do? Are you going to be able to steward the things that God has for you? 
Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. It's hard to hold your peace sometimes, but the Lord will fight for you and you got to hold your peace. John 10, 10, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come to give you life and I've come to give you life more abundantly. Does anybody feel like the enemy has been trying to kill, steal, and destroy you, your dreams, and different things in your life? But I'm telling you, that is not God's plan. Stay in there. Two weeks ago, I was praying. I said, God, I have fasted and prayed, prayed and fasted. I've prayed, prayed, fasted, fasted. I've given. I've done everything I know to. All I know how to do is just stand. He said, that's all I've asked you to do now. He's going to come through for you, okay? Don't ever turn away right before your breakthrough happens. And, you know, you can also look, look, look at the nation and all the stuff the nation's going through. That affects your life. People call me. I had somebody come in and I said, man, pray for me. I said, why? I'm going through a lot. I said, let me ask you, are you going through these three things? Boom, boom, boom. He said, how did you know? I said, because you're the fourth person today that called me from out of town telling me to pray for him about these same things. It's over the nation right now, and it's going to break. Things are about to break. Romans 13, 1. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. So let me ask you this. Governing authorities... What jurisdiction do you have in the spirit as a governing authority? Any area in life, when you see something not working properly, it's because somebody who has a governing authority is not fully walking in the things that they have. You're tracking with me? Governing authorities. There's a lot of times people will be like, man, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. In, in, in a city, in a business, in a nation, things just don't look right, things don't feel right. There's a governing authority that can rise up at that time and change things. Have you ever w walked in one business and you, and you felt the peace of God, then you walk in the same type of business and you didn't feel anything? There's a governing authority that's working in one and not in the other. You ever walked in a house and you felt the peace of God? The governing authority is working there. What, where are you in your family as the governing authority? Where are you? You know, some people said, man, I don't like my job, but I know God put me there. You're a governing authority. You may be the low person on the totem pole at work, but the highest person in the spirit. You are there with a governing authority. If we will take authority over things, you will see things start to shift. You can control atmospheres. You can control things. You Just by the words that come out of your mouth with the power that you have. The biggest problem with people today is people don't know how powerful they are. They really don't understand the power and authority that they have. And once we realize that, things change. And it goes on to say in Romans 13, 1, it says, For all authority comes from God. It's not you. It's God, but he wants to use you. For those in position of authority have been placed there by God. Use your authority. Now, let me get to the first word of the week. It was the break open week. Acts 16, 25, 26. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoner. They were in jail. How in the world do you praise God in jail? They were praising the Lord in jail. And it said suddenly there was a great earthquake. Why? Multiple times in Acts, it says when people are praying, things are shaking. You want some things shaking in your life, start praying. Nothing can stay complacent when you start praying. And when you start praying in the Holy Spirit, y'all, there is a whole lot of shaking going on. Things are about to shake. Things are about to quake. And things are about to move. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison was shaken. Every wrong foundation of your life when you start praying is shaken. Sometimes in life you just need a new foundation. You need things shaken in your life. And when you pray, things are going to happen. And then it said, immediately all the doors were open and every chain was loosed. This is a break open week. Every chain you have can be broken in the place of prayer. Every chain in your family can be broken in the place of prayer. Everything in your business can be broken open in the place of prayer. It just starts happening. When you believe that, Isaiah 58, 6, is this not the fast that I've chosen for you to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke, every yoke. When you start fasting and, and praying, when you start fasting, they start breaking. When you start praying, they start shaking. They will shake and they will break open when you fast and pray. When people call me uh, and they be like, hey, would you pray for me? I, I said, cool, but have you fasted and prayed? And when they said no, 
I'm like, how bad do you really want this breakthrough? If you really want this breakthrough, and I asked this one guy, he was going through some horrific stuff, and, and I said, man, let's mean you go on a three-day fast. He said, I don't want to fast. I said, you don't want your breakthrough. If you really want your breakthrough, you can have it. Is it going to come easy? Probably not, but hey, that's the fun about it. We get in there, and we can do the impossible with the Lord. Last thing th- this week, I had, had some pretty strong stuff going on in the spirit and just some warfare, and I was just praying and going through something um, with some people that I love and care about, and it's like I was praying, and I started to really dwell on something. Y'all, everybody listen to this. I started to, to think on something, and it started to take root in my heart, and the Lord said the weirdest, funniest thing to me, okay? He said, you got to have that ricochet anointing. I said, are you East Texan, God? I said, ricochet anointing. You know, the first thing I thought about was the Bible say the helmet of salvation. What is salvation? Thinking differently. Ding. Don't let it touch your mind. Breastplate of righteousness ricochet off of you. One of the quickest things I do is any vain imagination, any thought. You know, people will lie about you. They will say stuff. They will write you, text you. Um, I get at least 100 um, unappropriate messages sent to me a day online. And it's crazy stuff. As soon as I read the first part, I'm, I'm done. I just block, hide, delete. Thank you, Jesus. And keep going about my day. But when the Lord said that ricochet anointing, I started thinking about this. Ephesians 6, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may withstand the evil day and all that's done, the wiles, tricks, and schemes of the devil. And at the end of it, what are you going to do? Stand. You're going to stand. When you have on the full armor of God, you will be able to stand. And then it says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? The quality of being morally right. When you put on your breastplate, that means you guard your heart and you'll be morally right. When you're not morally right, things don't operate right in your life. You're uneasy in your life. Your atmosphere is uneasy because you don't have that morality. The next one is after you've shod your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace, we need peace. And it says, above all, take up the shield of faith. Well, what is the shield of faith going to do? It's going to quench all of the darts from the wicked one. People are always going to be shooting stuff at you. People, word curses, jealousy. My intercessor says the number one biggest warfare people ever face in life is jealousy and people speaking against them. That's just part of it. And then in the last part it says, and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Lord. The last two things in this are the best two things. We save the best for last, the helmet and the sword. See, here, here's what you got to understand. Nehemiah, when he was building the great wall, what was he doing? He had a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other. The problem is people want to build and be so successful in life, they put both hands on tools and none on a sword. Some people get so scared in life, they put two hands on a sword and they're not building something. In the midst of the best time, I'm talking the best time of your life when you were skipping through a field of tulips and rainbows all around you in the perfect weather, you still got to have a hand on the sword. And I'm talking about the worst time of your life when you're going through everything, everything's happening against you, you got to have one hand on a tool to still build. People in life who are thriving in life know how to build in the midst of adversity. Have you ever believed on something and every doctor kept telling you lies and that's not what God was saying? You ever watched the news and they were saying something and the Lord said that's not the truth? You ever had your family, your friends, your coworkers saying stuff against you and and the Lord said that's not true? That's not true. You got to fight those words off. You you, got to have that shield. You got to have that helmet of salvation. You got to have that ricochet anointing off your chest. And while you're fighting through that, a lot of times in tears and heartache and pain, you're still building because a brighter day is coming. Think about Jesus Christ in the garden, knowing that 
that his, one of his closest people to him was about to betray him. You know what? He was praying, but he kept on praying. He was praying twofold. He was praying for protection. He was praying for wisdom to have strength to continue the journey. He knew he was going to a cross. He knew what he was, he was going to be persecuted. He was going to die for the ones that he came there for, and he kept going. And, and I say this to people, and people don't like it. In the midst of your, your biggest pain that you have, that's when you can push through the most. God is looking for people who have a testimony. How's this testimony sound? My life's been perfect. My life's great. I've never had a bad day in my life. Do you want to follow Jesus? No, no, no. Let me tell you what I went through. The Bible says that people are changed by two things, the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. Whenever you're going through and you don't think you can go anymore, you say, oh, but my testimony is about to change somebody. People are like, man, I bet. Somebody told me, said, man, but your life has been perfect. I'm like, no. And they're like, well, did, did, you, did you have a lot of testimony? I'm like, yeah. They're like, huh, I never would have known it. I know. I went through the fire, but I don't smell like smoke. I'm like the Hebrew boys. I'm coming on out better than I ever was. You got to understand, you got brighter days coming. There is a break open season coming. You, listen, when you get that ricochet anointing, it ain't spelt like it sounds. Hey, I ain't going to lie. I spelled it Rick, R-I-C-K, Shay, S-H-A-Y. I never want to spell and be. It's R-I-C-O-C-H-E-T, okay? And, and so you got to understand that when things come against you, the mindset is something triggered that to come against me because I'm about to move closer into what God has for me. You know, people going to college and, and they're going into their junior year, senior year. Oh, man, they lost a scholarship. Oh, man, tuition just went up. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how this, don't you think there's a reason you're going through that? You're going to a job and you're doing good and you get laid off. Man, God's got something better for you. Keep your head up. Keep going. People come against you. They ain't your people. You, you just have to keep going, and, and you have to stand for what is right, okay? And, and, and just like and I will go over that, that the whole armor of God, you got to understand that whole armor of God. Now, now, Ezra, he says that every day going to school, he, he recites that, but it's more than just something that kids recite. Every day, you got to go after God and have that helmet of salvation. you got to guard. Why is that metal? You have to guard your mind every single day. That breastplate will guard your heart. What does heart actually mean? It also means mind and emotion. Guard your emotions. Emotions are the number one thing that destroys people, in my opinion, over anything in this world. It is your emotions when you're emotionally weak. And I just want you to realize how much is inside of you. And I'm going to end with uh, there's unfathomable, ridiculous favor coming. Why? Because I believe that God is about to do something big in America and the nations of the world over the next 10, 15 years. And you know what? Every person in here is going to be a huge part of it. Some of you, it may be in church. Some of you, it may be in business. Some of you, you have no idea. It could be in media. It could be in whatever, whatever. It may be in education. Some of you may be in the political realm. You may be, um, God may call you. There's no telling what he could call you to do. But jump into what God has for you. All right? I'm going to pray. We're going to have some people come up here. If you want prayer, I just encourage you to come up and, and get prayer. You know, there's some people, you know, if you ever want to just give your life to God or, or just rededicate your life, come up here and let somebody pray with you. There's power when two people come together in agreement in the Lord. And today's word, it was a strong word because I, I really believe that God wants to give people hope. If you're going through a rough time, it's okay. If you've been under some attacks, it's okay. You're going to be okay. If you got a bad doctor's report, it's okay. I remember one of my favorite stories to tell is God told me I was going to write articles for a certain publication. A certain publication. I wrote an article and they rejected it, rejected it, rejected it. I had 88 straight rejections. I would write an article, waste my time, send it to them. They would reject, 88. One day I said, God, you told me I was supposed to write for this, this publication. And I don't know if you've noticed, God, but I've sent 80 
eight articles in and they rejected every single one. Maybe I was, God was using that to teach me how to deal with rejection and maybe I'm a slow learner. Okay, I should have learned after the first one. But they took that 89th. Yeah, it's funny, huh? And uh, they took the 89th and they took the next 24 as well. That's that break open anointing that's going to hit your life. I don't care if you've applied for so many jobs, applied for so many colleges, that right job, that right college, that right whatever, that right business partner, that right whatever it is, is about to happen to you. It's going to, okay? So, Father God, I love you, and I declare life and life more abundantly, Lord. And I'm just going to declare the second part of John 10.10. 10. Lord, I feel some people have came in, people watching online, they've, they went through the first part of John they, they've been under a lot of attacks. The kill, still and destroy. But I rebuke every one of those in Jesus' name. And we claim in the name of Jesus, life and life more abundantly. And I declare that over every person that is here. Lord, I just speak life, resurrection life, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in every single aspect. And I just speak the peace of God that passes all understanding over every person that is here, Lord. Amen. As they go back into worship, if you want to sit there with the Lord, that's cool. If you want prayer, got a lot of people that would love to pray for you. And when you come for prayer, I tell people, when you come up for prayer, believe it's going to be done. Don't hope, don't wish. Believe that whatever you come to prayer for, it's going to be done. Because we serve a good Father. Amen.